So this here turned out to be one of the best things I ever made. I'd say probably top 10, that's, that's no exaggeration. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how we took all these ingredients here and turned it in to what you see here. But first, a little story time. So the story goes, I went to the butcher shop and I asked for short ribs. Uh, I don't want to say I'm new to the whole meat game, but I never made short ribs before. Uh, my friend bought some delicious ones and he said just go to the butcher and ask for short ribs. I did that and he gave me something that's not exactly what I was looking for. First I was disappointed, but I always like to be tested. So I decided, you know what, let's find what we can do with short ribs and I'm going to make a delicious stew. So first things first, I set everything up. Oh, everything up already out here, so I'm not gonna explain what that is. You'll read that in the in the ingredients section of this video, and I'll explain more as I put stuff in. So in the meantime, first thing I need to do is I need to get these ribs seared. There's a lot of them. It's about a kilo point two, so 1,200 grams of meat. So I'm gonna do it in two batches. Like I said, you were going to want to get um, all sides seared essentially, so whatever it takes, you don't need to be too particular here. Just try to get a couple minutes on each side um, of, of the ribs and you should be good to go. Don't forget, when, you, when I say all the sides, I mean all the sides. It's good to get the actual edges of this seared just in brown, nice and colorful, and not just the front and back. There we go. Try getting standing up on each other if you can. These pieces are already done to be honest with you. They're smaller so I'm going to pull those out. These came out nice and brown. Doesn't even take eight minutes. There we go. I'm going to get all of these out. Put in the new batch. I got the meat browned up now. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the to the um, to the Dutch oven. Alrighty, now I'm just gonna add the carrots, onion, and celery to it. Now, this is just something I learned over my time of cooking. You see I got the tray prepared all nicely and orderly. It takes a bit of prep work to do it. It really doesn't take more time, it just takes a bit of more thinking. But it makes it a lot easier so I don't have to go back and forth and check the, the recipe every single time. I already know what I need to do. I already got everything prepared. I can just go. The way I like to do things, and you might find this convenient for yourselves as well. So you're basically you're gonna um, mix the celery, the onion, and the garlic. Sorry, the celery, the onion, and the carrot all together in the Dutch oven. Wait till the onion gets brown. You're doing this all on medium high heat. And again, the recipe will be in the description section. It's very simple. Very, very simple. Next step. We're gonna add about a half tablespoon of tomato paste to our mix. Now I should say the portions are kind of small for this one because I'm making not that many servings. I'm just making the, for the amount of uh, beef I have. But should still come out well. I'm just about a cup and a half of flour. So I'm gonna stir that in until the whole mix gets nice deep red. And at some point, I'll add in beef stock. Okay. So instead of using a whole bottle of wine, I'm using just half a bottle of wine. So I put it in a measuring cup, but it comes from Israeli Barkan wine. So I'm going to pour that in now. Okay, mixing in nice and well. I'll turn out the heat because it's cooking a bit much. Okay, now that I got the wine, the wine in, I'm gonna add the best part of this, the ribs. Now, as I look at this, I'll admit to you, and I might edit, edit this out, but I'm slightly concerned. I want to make sure this all fits in there. I think it will, or at least they'll fit on top of each other. There's a lot of ribs here for the circumference of the of the pot I'm working with. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat because I need to get this to a boil. So I'm gonna bring it up to medium high. Because it's already pretty hot. It's been heating up for a long time. So the wine will already start boiling. 
Once I get this to a boil, or once I put the ribs all in, I'm gonna add the herbs. I'm gonna add in the garlic and the herbs. So I took half a head of garlic and cut it in half. Gonna dump that right in there. And now I'm going to put in the herbs. Now for the herbs, these are batches of, we have our bay leaves, our oregano, this is fresh oregano, fresh thyme, and fresh rosemary. And I'm also going to add in some parsley here. I'm not going to measure out the parsley. But this should do. All right. It's not much room to mix it in, but I'm going to try anyway. Next to last step, I'm putting in some beef stock. This is about two cups for the amount that we have here. I'm just going to pour it all in. Bring this whole thing to a boil, which will happen in no time. I'm going to show you of that. Now guys, when, when much of your recipe calls for beef stock, at least in my opinion, you sure use the best possible. So I use really good beef stock that I got from a, a really amazing butcher I have around the corner here. Um, I like to make my own chicken stock and also just always get quality because so many recipes call for chicken stock and beef stock and I see people using powders. I wouldn't recommend it. It's no point. So we're going to bring this all to a boil, which again will happen in just a matter of seconds. And then I'm going to cover it and put it in an oven that's already been preheating for about 20 minutes now at about 175 degrees Celsius, which is I think is like 350 Fahrenheit for my American friends out there. So let's get that to a boil here. I'm going to dump, push that all in. So I, I have this up at boiling now. I turned off the, the heat and now I'm going to put it in the oven. Like I said, it's been preheating at about 175 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to put this in and relax for the next two and a half hours while this cooks. Now, the best thing is to serve this on a bed of mashed potatoes. So let's see how I do that. I want to say something. I've noticed that a lot of people who I know who cook quite well, they have the main thing that they're making. Let's say in this case, we're making a, a stew. I guess that's what it's called. And then they have the next part. The stew goes on mashed potatoes. And I find that naturally the stew is kind of the most important part, but I really believe that things are ruined if you don't make the bed that it sits on delicious. And this goes the same with a lot of things. By the way, it's a, it's a matter of, it's kind of like flavor pairing, you know, you don't want to have shitty wine or not the right wine with a delicious steak. It doesn't, it doesn't go well. Or you don't want to have an amazing burger sitting on top of really cheap store-bought store uh, stale buns. So, in this case, with mashed potatoes, I also want to invest in these. And it's very important to get the right potatoes and know what kind of potato, how you want your potatoes to be. I'm making a fluffy variety of mashed potatoes because I feel like that just goes better with the kind of stew that we're having. It's a bit lighter when we have a heavy stew with broth and wine and a bunch of meat in it. So you want the fluffy bed for it to sit on. That's just my opinion, as opposed to a really heavy creamy one. So I'll admit, I, I messed up and I didn't record part of the video where part part of the mashed potato making process um but i promise that i will include it all in the description section um the, the entire details of what i did it's actually fairly simple but it's different than what i've done before so i wanted to share and because it turned out incredibly well so essentially the the two things that i did differently uh was that i i washed the potatoes after i peeled and diced them I washed them in cold water a few times, uh, basically putting them in cold water, uh, mixing them around as you see in the video, and uh, dumping out the water a few times until, until it runs clear. Then I boiled them, and then after I boiled them, I started mashing them uh, with a potato masher. You can also use a food mill or something like that. Um, and I added, I gradually added 
a ton of butter and a good amount of milk as well. And uh, I just kept adding it until it got to the consistency and the flavor I wanted. I also added salt and pepper to taste and everything like that. But um, with the, the milk and the butter, I just, I just gradually added it in, added it in until it got to the level I wanted it for this particular recipe. So uh, it turned out great and I'm definitely going to do it again. And it really matched this recipe. All right, guys. So I haven't opened this yet. I don't know how it's going to look, but let's all hope for the best. Okay, so far it looks pretty good. It smells delicious. I'm gonna put this on a on a pillow of mashed potatoes. And this is really the one of the best parts of it all, which is taking all these juices and pouring it right over the whole plate. It was amazing, and it added so much flavor. And there you guys have it, some amazing braised short ribs over some fluffy mashed potatoes. It turned out amazing. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I hope you all get a chance to make this. And if you like this video and want to see more and want to see me improve, hit the like button and subscribe.